Hello everyone, today's tutorial is for this awesome disappearing hourglass quilt. It's unlike any other that you can find and it's so easy and I'm going to show you how to make it. So let's get started. let's get started now this is the block that we are going to be making it is a disappearing hourglass block and if you saw the last tutorial it was about how to make the hourglass uh, block and um, if you want to refer to that I can certainly put a link I will put a link right up on top and so that is going to be the basis for starting this block but instead of using five inch squares like we did during the last tutorial we're going to start with 10 inch squares and i have got this awesome 10 inch uh square layer cake and it's called painterly petals by robert kaufman and it's just these gorgeous florals that look like they were painted with watercolors and they're super pretty and it's going to really stand out nicely i also have a layer cake that is white it's not solid white. It's got a little bit of embossing on it, which you really can't see unless it hits the light a certain way. But it, it really does read as a solid. So we're gonna be using both of those. And so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do to get started is to make our hourglass. And to do that, we're gonna grab one of the prints and one of the solids the whites and we're just going to put those right sides together and then we're going to draw a line diagonally from one corner to the other corner make sure I get that perfect from side to or from corner to corner Okay, there's a nice line and then we are just going to sew a quarter inch down both sides of this line to make two big half square triangles so i'm going to go do that okay so i've sewn on both sides and now i'm just going to take my ruler and i'm going to put it along that line that we've drawn and i'm just going to cut right along that line And that will give me two half square triangles like so and I'm gonna put these on my ironing board with the dark side up and I'm just gonna press those to the dark side and each half square triangle will make two of the blocks or I should say each of the 10 inch square pairing will make two of the blocks for our quilt. I'll show you what I mean. So now I've got my two half square triangles that are huge and I'm just going to put those together opposites. So put the light on top of the dark and the dark on top of the light and make sure you get your, your seam snuggled up right next to each other. And then we're gonna do the same procedure. We're going to draw a line from corner to corner. And we are just gonna sew quarter inch on each side of this line. Okay, so I've sewn along my line and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna put my ruler right along that line that we drew and I'm going to cut right along that line. So that will give me two of these large hourglass blocks. So I'm just gonna make sure that it gets pressed nice and flat okay 
If you hear television in the background, I apologize. My husband is watching Ozark. Okay, so here we have our two hourglass blocks, but we're only going to work with one right now. So we'll put the other one aside for right now, and it's going to be the same procedure for all of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is get out my rotating cutting mat because this is really going to come in handy. Now, if you don't have a rotating cutting mat, you can still do this, of course. All you have to do, what helps me, I should say, is when I'm not using my rotating cutting mat, I just physically walk around the table, my cutting station, so then I can cut at all angles rather than trying to move your pieces around and keep your pieces where they go. So now we're going to do what is the magic part of this, and we're gonna make this into our disappearing hourglass. So we're going to take a ruler and we are going to cut two inches away from this line that we've sewn. So I am going to put the two inch line of my ruler right on that seam and I am going to cut right along this line. Let's see, make sure I uh, didn't cut all the way through. So let me try that again. I just put these non-skid little stickers on my rulers so they wouldn't slide. And it seems to be working pretty well. There we go. And then I'm just going to rotate my mat 90 degrees. And that keeps these pieces together pretty nicely. And I'm going to do the same thing to all four lines. Make sure my two inches is right on that seam that we've sewn. And I'm just going to cut along that line. Rotate it 90 degrees. One more cut, actually two more cuts right along that line. And one more time. Y'all, this is so cool. I love the way this turns out. Okay. I missed a little seam in my cut there. There we go. So now, if I pull these pieces apart just a little bit, you can see where we've cut kind of explode it up a little bit. So see how that works? So now what we do is we're gonna take the center piece and we are just gonna rotate it 90 degrees so that the white borders up with the, with the uh, print. And then we're gonna switch our triangles. So I'm gonna switch these triangles and I'm gonna switch these triangles. Make sure you get them in the right orientation, how they were, so that when we sew these back together, we are gonna end up with this disappearing block. That's gonna look like this. Isn't that awesome? I just love it. So the nice, the other nice thing about having this, this rotating mat is that I can carry this mat right over to the sewing machine and I can sew it together. So when I sew these together, I'm going to sew them together in rows. So this row I'm gonna sew first. I'm just going to take this little triangle, fold it over and match it up at the top. And then I'm gonna sew right down this side. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Just flip it over and match it at the top so it's square. And I'm gonna sew right down the side. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the center. I'm going to sew this to here and I'm going to sew this to here. And then the same thing at the top as I did to the bottom. And then, uh, and we'll go do that. I'll let you watch me do it and then you'll get it. Okay. So I brought my rotating mat over to the sewing machine. I'm going to start with this row here. So I'm just gonna take this 
little piece here and flip it right over and align it with the top. I'm going to sew right down that side a quarter inch. And I am going to press these seams towards the center. So as you notice, it's your triangle is going to end up a little shorter than these long pieces and that's okay because we're going to trim down the whole block. And I'm just going to take this piece and flip it over this way and aligning it with the top corner. And I'm going to sew down this side. I have, I'm going to flip it over. Just make sure it's all aligned nicely. And again, I am going to press that towards the center, press the seam towards the center. So that is together. Looks like a little angel with wings. Let's do the center row here. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to um, nest my seams. And this seam, because of the way we cut it when we were doing the hourglass, I'm gonna nest I'm going to change this seam to go to the dark side so that when we get the final block done, it will lay nice and flat. Now these are going to get pressed away from the center. The seam allowances will go away from the center. And I'm going to do this one here, flip it over, nest my seams. These ones should already be nesting very nicely. Again, on this middle one, we are going to press them away from the center so that when we put them all together, everything will nest. And let's do this top row, flip that over, square up the top there. And these are going towards the center again. I just finger press it and then when I put it all together, I do a big press with the iron. I'm going to do the last one here for this row, square up the top, sew them together. Finger press it towards the center. So now I'm ready to sew my rows together. I'm just going to flip this over this way and all of your seams that you are matching now, they should be going opposite directions. So you should be able to nest them together. And if you want to pin it, you can certainly do that. I am not going to because I like to start sewing and then nest my seams as I go along. And then these seams will be going away from the center. So let's get the bottom one sewn on. Nest your seams.
Okay, again, I'm pressing this away from the center. So this is what your block is going to look like. So it's not going to be perfectly square. You're going to have these, these little triangles sections are going to be shorter than the other one, but we're going to square that up. I think that looks pretty cool. So let's go iron this and then square it up. Okay, so we are back. We are over at the cutting mat and the ironing board. And so I am going to iron this up nice and flat. All of my center, the center square, I want all my seams to be going away from the center and that will help it lay nice and flat. So let's get this ironed. Little steam. Sometimes it's nice to press it from the back. Make sure all your seams are going the right way. Nobody's going to look at the inside of your quilt, obviously but sometimes it really helps to make sure your seams are all pressing the way you want them to. And that really helps your quilt lay nice and flat so that when it comes time to quilt it, you won't be hitting a lot of bumps and things like that. And you just want it to lay as flat as you can get it. And it'll also help take care of any puckers or anything like that. Oh, I think this is gonna turn out so cute. So now we're going to square this up to seven and a half inches and seven and a half inches is it will square up these shorty short little triangles here along the side so i am using my ruler i have an eight inch ruler here and in order to square it up to seven and a half inches you have to take seven and a half and divide it by two and that is three and three quarters. So I have made a little Sharpie dot. I don't know if you can see it right at the seven and I mean, right at the three and three quarters mark, both up and down and crossways. And this is gonna help me square up this block. So I'm gonna take that little dot and I'm gonna put it right in the center of the block where my this little checkerboard four patch come together. And I'm gonna take my 45 degree diagonal line, which is this line on my ruler. I'm gonna make sure that is following the seam that I've sewn. So once I've got everything lined up, I can cut this to seven and a half inches. So I'm just gonna very carefully cut along the sides and the top and then turn it around and do the same thing put my little dot in the center and my 45 degree line going up the seam of course this time you can look and make sure you are at seven and a half on the other side and just make your cuts. And there you have it. That is our disappearing hourglass block. So let's make up a bunch of these and put them all together and see how they look. So here's the uh, blocks up on my design wall. I tried them two different ways. And then as I usually do, I pulled my friends and family on which way they liked the best. And you will see what they chose next. So this is what they chose and I love it. So just remember as you're sewing your rows together to uh, alternate which direction you make your seam allowance and then as you sew your rows together 
they uh, will nest very nicely. I chose a very dark purple border. It looks black on here, but it's actually a very deep purple and it goes really nicely with some of the blocks. I'm really happy with it. I, I played with sashing too and decided not to put sashing in between the blocks because I really liked the way this looked. The quilt is seven blocks across by nine blocks down. It measures at about 56 by 70. So it's a large lap and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I really like it. I love the way it looks. It's so colorful and I arranged it so that the brightest colors were in the middle and it kind of uh, expanded to the darker colors around the outside. So I hope that you get a chance to make this. It was really fun and it ended up being a good size quilt. And so if you like this, please share it <clears throat> like it and subscribe it and um, I look forward to seeing you next time.